It is summertime here in the U.S. and a common occurrence is social gatherings with alcoholic beverages. Yeah, so if you are a breastfeeding or pumping mama, you may have wondered, hey, is it okay to have a glass of wine or a cocktail? Or do you need to pump and dump? Or do you need to wait a certain amount of hours after drinking? Yeah, and we know this can be a pretty hot topic in some circles. Indeed. So let's share what the science is and the data. Um, and if this is your first time meeting us, I'm Sarah. I'm a board certified OBGYN as well as currently a breastfeeding mama. I'm Kurt. I'm a board certified pediatrician and now dad of two. And we, we are, are the Doctors Dr. Bjorkman. Welcome back. So this week, we are going to discuss a somewhat controversial topic. And as we mentioned, that is drinking alcohol and breastfeeding. Yeah. So like many things with parenting, um, people have lots of feelings about drinking and breastfeeding. And I believe this comes from an overall good place in yes, terms of parents want to make sure they're making the right decisions for their children, keeping them safe, keeping them healthy. Absolutely. Um, so as always, let's start by sharing some of the science around alcohol, how the body process it, um, as well as the data and what we know about alcohol and breastfeeding so that moms, parents can decide what makes the most sense for their families. Now we need to stop here and just say we are definitely not endorsing drinking alcohol while breastfeeding, but we're also not saying that it's something you absolutely have to avoid either. Um, as it is, there's not great evidence that alcohol gives any major health benefit to the consumer. Um, and there's actually some arising data that it may be harmful even in moderate doses. And so we want you to take into consideration your own health um, also as you're thinking about how much alcohol you might consider consuming at a social gathering. With that, let's briefly talk about how alcohol is processed in the body. Now, alcohol is a small water-soluble molecule that is absorbed from the stomach and the small intestine into your bloodstream. Once it's in the bloodstream, it then goes throughout the body um, and goes to the places that are most well perfused, notably the brain, the lungs, and the liver. Um, the liver is actually responsible for getting rid of most of the alcohol in the body and gets rid of about 90% of the alcohol content in the blood. You also get rid of alcohol through your breath, through your sweat, and through urine. The amount of alcohol in your blood is measured by BAC, or blood alcohol content. A BAC of 0.0% means that there is zero alcohol in your system. As BAC increases, so do the effects you feel mm -hmm. from alcohol. Um, the blood alcohol content and its effect on the body has been well studied. Um, it does, of course, vary from person to person, male versus female, body composition, and things like that. Um, but um, as an example, a BAC of 0.03% or about one drink in an hour for a 160 pound woman, um, we would expect that you would kind of feel a little altered mood, maybe some relaxation and a slight loss of judgment. The legal limit for drinking and driving is 0.08% or about three drinks in one hour for that 160 pound woman. So at that percentage, 0.08, we would expect that you would probably have some reduced muscle coordination, decreased reaction time, maybe some impaired judgment and reasoning. A BAC of 0.3% to 0.4% is really high. Wow, you yeah, would really likely yeah. have loss of consciousness and alcohol poisoning, and this is potentially life-threatening. To get to that point, um, that 160 pound woman would need to drink 10 drinks in one hour. Yeah. Now, the reason why alcohol is such a major no-no while pregnant is that the alcohol content of mom is directly shared with baby via the placenta. So roughly whatever mom's blood alcohol content is, is the same blood alcohol content baby is seeing. And we know that there is no safe amount of alcohol during pregnancy. Um, and a lot of this is related to the risk of fetal alcohol syndrome, which carries with it some major neurodevelopmental delays um, in child that persist throughout the lifespan of that um, baby. Yep. But we also realize that it's really difficult to study alcohol consumption in pregnancy. There's no real safe or ethical way to right. do it. Um, and so we definitely can't say that, hey, three, three drinks during your third trimester right. is going to do harm either. Yeah. Um, but it is a major kind of concern, concern yeah. about significant alcohol consumption during pregnancy. Yes. So 
with pregnancy, when you're pregnant, mom's blood alcohol content is also the baby's blood mm -hmm. alcohol content. It is different with breastfeeding. And that is because mom's blood alcohol content is the same as the breast milk alcohol content. Yeah, which then baby's gonna drink and process and it's gonna lead to a much lower blood alcohol content for baby, maybe not at all. Correct. So let's go back to our 160 pound woman who had three drinks in an hour and we said that her BAC would be about 0.08%. So this means that the alcohol content of the breast milk at that time is about 0.08%. Baby would potentially be drinking that. So it is not 0%, but it is a minute amount of alcohol. Um, something that's often referenced um, is that orange juice is 0.5% mm. alcohol. And this is not that you are going to be feeding your baby orange juice. It's just kind of to show that, you know, we aren't thinking about the alcohol content of orange juice before we drink it or before we give it to our kids or things huh. like that. So what you're saying is the alcohol content of orange juice, a common thing we drink here often every day yep. is 0.5%. Yes. But the, the content of alcohol in breast milk after mom has three drinks in an hour is 0.08% or meaning that orange juice is six times mm -hmm more alcoholic than the breast milk would be after three drinks. Correct. And that's after three drinks. Most mamas just want to know, hey, is it okay if I have one glass of wine or one margarita this evening? Um, and so when we think about if that same 160 pound woman had one drink in an hour, we would expect that the breast milk alcohol content would be about 0.02%. Important things to know about drinking and breastfeeding. So alcohol levels are usually highest in breast milk 30 to 60 minutes after an alcoholic beverage is consumed. Um, and they can generally be detected in the breast milk for about two to three hours per drink after it's consumed. So pumping right after you drink is not going to remove the alcohol from the milk. The only thing that does that is time. The takeaway here is that the amount of alcohol present in breast milk at any given time is probably clinically insignificant to baby as they're then processing that very low content that then makes it into the breast milk. Yep. The real danger with drinking alcohol while breastfeeding is mm -hmm. mom potentially falling asleep on baby or falling while holding the baby or even the potential long-term health consequences from frequent binge drinking. Um, alcohol does transiently inhibit a letdown of milk and there is a potential drop in supply, but this is quick and there's usually a quick recovery thereafter. So the biggest concern with alcohol and breastfeeding really isn't the breast milk itself. It is that mom could be stumbly, falling, things like that. Mom yeah. being intoxicated is the biggest risk to yeah. a baby. And we strongly recommend against that. Yes. Um, there are some ways to, if you are really concerned about even a small amount of alcohol in the breast milk and giving that to your baby, we are gonna talk at the end about how you can still have a drink and then minimize that. So mm -hmm. stay tuned to the end. Um, in the, before that though, let's talk about some of the cautions with breastfeeding um, and drinking alcohol. As you mentioned, it can transiently inhibit letdown and the milk ejection reflexes. This has, um, there have been a few studies done um, and some have showed a slightly decreased supply in the immediate hours after um, drinking as well as infants taking in slightly smaller volumes in the two hours after um, mom has been drinking, however, that was transient and made up within that first 12 hours after um, mom was drinking. So. Gotcha. So there's a decrease in milk right after drinking, but it re rebounds quickly and then the babies make up for that in Seems. the next 8 to 12 hours. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Um, studies have also looked at infants after being exposed to a small amount of alcohol in the breast milk, and there are some data to show that it may affect sleep yep. um, and that they still sleep as long, but they may have less deep sleep, mm -hmm. wake up more frequently and have shorter kind of periods of sleep mm -hmm. during that sleep, much like it has an effect on okay. the consumer of alcohol themselves. Mm -hmm. Now we should say that the possible long-term effects of exposure to alcohol in mother's milk is unknown. Right. Um, there is actually a single frequently cited study from 1978 mm -hmm. of an infant who was adversely affected by alcohol in the breast milk yep. um, from mom. Um, the child 
was diagnosed with a pseudo Cushing syndrome at four months of age. And upon questioning, the mom actually admitted to drinking more than 17 liters of beer a week plus other alcohol and doing that chronically. Um, the mom was then encouraged to discontinue her alcohol intake. Um, and afterwards, the child gradually recovered to normal developmental mm -hmm. status. Yeah. So clearly that is an extreme example, um, but want to share all of you know the data that mm -hmm. is out there and we do know that binge drinking is bad for mom and for babies reviewing the literature about alcohol consumption and breastfeeding mm -hmm. the big takeaways are that alcohol is excreted into the breast milk but in concentrations similar to those seen in maternal blood mm -hmm. what that means is that the amount of alcohol ingested by baby via breast milk is a fraction right. of the amount ingested by mom the studies also suggest that the effect of occasional alcohol consumption on milk production is small, temporary, and unlikely to be of clinical relevance. Okay, so let's say there's someone who's breastfeeding and they're thinking about going to a social outing where there's going to be alcohol and they're thinking about drinking. What are their options if breastfeeding? Sure. So there's kind of three options and the first one is to have that drink or three um, and know that the amount of alcohol in the breast milk is very, very mm -hmm. minimal and that if you can safely find and take care for your baby, it is safe to give them that breast milk. Option two is if you want to minimize any alcohol exposure um, to your baby, even though it's really minimal in the breast milk, you say, hey, I want it to be as minimized as possible, but I'd still really like to have a drink. The smart, um, kind of savvy thing to do if you can plan ahead would be to feed baby, either pump or feed your baby right before you have your drink. So that buys you a little bit of time mm. and then have your beverage of choice um, and then wait two to three hours to either pump or feed the baby right then, because we know that the alcohol um, is processed um, and cleared from the body. Um, it takes about two to three hours to clear one drink. But with either of those options, there's no need to pump and dump. Correct, correct. We're saying if you feed baby or pump, have a drink, wait two or three hours, most most the liver body should have processed that alcohol and it should be out of the breast milk and that by milk that, that you pump time. At two to three hours is still fine to give right. the baby. Yep. And if you went with option number one, still fine to give the baby. Correct. Option three is of course, um, to skip the drink and opt for some of the fun alcohol-free options or a mocktail. <laughs> I had some surprisingly good mocktails um, when I was pregnant at some different uh, hotel bars and was like pleasantly surprised that they are actually, there's some pretty good ones out there. Yeah. So it sounds like there's lots of good options for kind of whatever feels right to you. Yep. And hopefully this really helps give you some of that evidence to know that, you know what, you don't need to dump that breast milk. That right. breast milk is still fine. There's some ways to even minimize the amount of alcohol even more from its already very low amounts. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I remember when we shared this information um, on our Instagram a couple of years ago about alcohol and breastfeeding. I think I shared this photo of me having a glass of wine while breastfeeding the baby. And most people were really grateful to actually see some evidence and see the data. Um, and there were a few people who were just horrified um, that I would drink and breastfeed a baby and, you know, this poor baby and whatever. Um, we do not share this information to try to convince anyone to drink while they're breastfeeding or anything like that. It's just, there is kind of this paucity of information about it. And so we wanted to share the evidence that exists um, and the data so that you can do what feels right for you um, and breastfeeding and pumping and feeding your baby. Um, some people say, I don't want to expose my baby to any alcohol at all. And that's 
totally wonderful and fine. Breastfeeding is a short season. You can you cannot drink alcohol for however long you're breastfeeding your baby. Um, and that is great and we support that and that's wonderful. And on the flip side, there are some mamas who feel like it's a burden or they're missing out or it's some huge sacrifice. You know, they didn't drink for nine months while pregnant and now they want to have their sushi and they want a glass of wine and they want to know like, hey, is this safe? Is this bad for my baby? Because the one thing we all have in common is we want to do what is best for our baby. And that of course looks different um, for every family. Um, so just wanted to share some of the evidence that's out there um, and to say that it, it really does seem to suggest that you don't, it's probably safe to not pump and dump. Um, that breast milk is really precious and you're working really hard. Um, and so with a couple drinks, probably don't need to pump and dump. There are really very, very few reasons that you need to pump and dump. We can talk on about that in another episode. Um, but that is what we do. I feel very comfortable having a glass of wine, having a margarita um, and breastfeeding the baby while I have a drink in my hand, um, splitting a seltzer or a beer with Kurt. The data has made us feel very comfortable that it is clinically insignificant for the babe. So whatever's best for you, we support that. So cheers. Yeah. Um, let us know in the comments what you all do when you are drinking, breastfeeding, pumping, all of those things. If you have any questions, please leave them below and we will see you all next week. Bye guys. We're doctors. But not your doctors. Anything we've said in this video is for education or entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Any specific medical questions you have should be directed to your provider.